welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Tookie Williams, an American gangster who founded a Crips gang in Los Angeles. The Crips are one of the largest and most violent street gangs in the United States, with an estimated 30 to 35,000 members. As a gang, they have been involved in murders, robberies, drug dealing, weapons trafficking, and many other crimes. The states with the highest number of Crips are California, Texas, and Oklahoma. Members typically consist of African American men, but Crips can also be white, Hispanic, or even Asian. During the 1990s, the Crips began to establish a presence in Canada, officially making the gang international. To give you some perspective, an Army Corps number between 20 to 45,000 soldiers. Since conservative estimates from the LAPD number the Crips around 35,000, this means there is an entire Army Corps operating in the streets through this one gang. America seems to have two armies, a mainstream one, operating overseas, and an underground one, operating in the streets. How did this all start? Being the founder of Crips, our guest in this episode may give us an idea. As always, let's start with a brief background. Stanley Tucky Williams was born on December 29, 1953, in Shreveport, Louisiana. His father abandoned the family when he was a child, so his mother moved to California and settled in the south central region of LA. As a child, William would hang out in abandoned houses and engage in street fights for money. He was also expelled from George Washington Preparatory High School and blackballed by several other high schools for fighting. By the time Williams was a teenager, he had gained a reputation in South Central LA as a vicious street fighter. At the age of 16, William was arrested in Inglewood for car theft and sent to Juvenile Hall. While doing time at the detention, William was introduced to Olympic weightlifting, and this experience would spark an interest in bodybuilding. By the age of 17, William was physically bigger and stronger. Upon release from custody, the review board asked him, what do you plan on doing after getting out? His reply was, being the leader of the biggest gang in the world. Shortly after being released from prison, Williams was approached by Raymond Washington, another LA gang member with a reputation for violence. Washington had heard of Williams' toughness and willingness to fight members of larger, more established street gangs. Washington was from South Central LA, where he was a prominent gangster similar to William. The two decided to fuse their influence in their respective regions to form a larger gang, the Crips. Their purpose for creating the Crips was to eliminate all the street gangs and create a neighborhood watch in South Central. Sort of like a Black Panther version 2. Williams would go on to say, We started out, at least my intent was to, in a sense, address all the so-called neighboring gangs in the area and to put, in a sense, I thought I can cleanse the neighborhood of all these, you know, marauding gangs but I was totally wrong, and eventually, we morphed into the monster we were addressing. Again, I will reiterate. Williams stated that he founded the Crips with the intention of eliminating other gangs and creating a force powerful enough to protect local black people from racism, corruption, and police brutality. At the time of the Crips' initial formation, there were only three sets. Washington's East Side Crips, later called East Coast Crips, Williams West Side Crips, which later would become the A-Trade Gangster Crips, and the Compton Crips, led by a teenager named Mac Thomas. Williams and Thomas went on an aggressive and violent recruitment campaign throughout the black ghettos of LA, where they challenged the leaders of other gangs to one-on-one -on -one street fights. This process resulted in most gangs agreeing to join the Crips and they were converted from small independent cliques into subgroups known as sets within the larger Crips gang. The Crips quickly became the biggest street gang in South Central by both numbers and territory. 
However, a number of smaller gangs still resisted losing their independence. These holdout gangs formed a similar alliance to combat the Crips, branding themselves as the Bloods, a gang that would become an arch rival. It would not take long for the leaders of the Crips to come crashing down. Raymond Washington was murdered after serving five years in prison. Mac Thomas was murdered a year later over a petty argument. Williams, however, was the last founding Crip leader to survive. He began to live a double life, where he worked a legal job as an anti-gang youth counselor in Compton during the day, while also serving as the overboss of the largest gang in Los Angeles at night. Despite his anti-gang work, in 1979, Williams was involved in two robberies where he shot and killed four people. This ultimately led to his arrest and a very public trial. In 1981, he was convicted of all four murders, and Arnold Schwarzenegger sentenced him to death. He died in 2005 by lethal injection at the St. Quentin State Prison. Out of Williams' 24 years on death row, six of them were spent in solitary confinement. This solitude reportedly led him to evolve, and he would go on to write several books encouraging the youth to steer away from the street life he had helped create. He petitioned for clemency several times, and the constant denials led to serious public discourse about capital punishment. A local LA radio show added a segment called Tookie Must Die that ran every day for the month leading up to his execution, in which they interviewed both supporters and dissenters of the death penalty. Many celebrities, including Snoop Dogg and Jamie Foxx, also publicly supported Tookie's clemency. The only thing Schwarzenegger had to say was that it is, quote, the toughest thing when you are governor, dealing with someone's life, end quote. He ultimately decided to deny clemency on a basis that the evidence of his guilt was just too strong to ignore. And he stated that Williams' book, Life in Prison, was proof that he had not reformed. The Terminator had spoken. Hasta la vista, baby. It is hard to believe that a group who started on a path of community protection would degenerate into the violent street gang we see today. There are a few lessons we can learn from this. First, we should recognize that it's no easy task to create a community. That's why I have a series on a subject. Second, we should acknowledge that ideas have lifespan. Every movement usually starts genuine, but inevitably degenerates into a monster when it is not put away with after mission accomplished. This statement is true for the CIA, Women's Lib, NAACP, etc. Again, ideas have lifespan. If we don't put them away after a certain period, they devolve into the very thing they originally sought out to destroy. See you next time.